media? How we'll be using the media players? How we'll be using the video players in Android applications? So that is all that we we are going to cover now, all right? So if I talk about the Android media player, all right? A media player is an easier way if you want to play an audio file in the background or somewhere in the application. Media player class can be used to control playbacks of audio or video file streams. Let me show you an example. How are you making use of it? All right, it's something that is very important. Here. So whichever file you feel like housing or using within your application has to be first of all placed under the draw folder. Can everybody see the draw folder here? in my screen let me tell you about this how are you going to create this app go on to the specific folder right go on to resources go on to new and here you say new folder and you have to create a new folder with the name RAW let me tell you about this it is only the raw folder that you have to use in order to house all your media files because Android is very specific with the folder naming conventions and also the folder structuring, right? So if you are making use of raw folder, it automatically looks up for all the media files in the raw folder, right? If you are placing it somewhere else, it won't pick up the media files. Got my point here? So how are you going to use this app? You just create a media player object. Start the media player object or create a media player object with the raw file that you have placed under the raw folder. So you place an mp3 file inside the application folder and you give it a path, all right? And just call the media player dot start. Nothing fancy here. Media player will do it everything for you. All right, let me show you an example for this. So here what I have done is I have created a small example here which would play a audio file. I'll just show you to the show it to you. All right. So here I have created a small example which contains this particular activity. It contains two buttons. One is a player song and then is a stopper song button. If I go on to the audio player dot Java, you see my media player object, all right, and also a boolean status. So this status variable is being used here in order to check whether my media is playing or not. So that if I want to stop any media, I can just check whether I'm actually playing a media before stopping it up or not. All right. I click, click a button play, I click a button stop listener and attach them up to an on click listener. Here I say, if my status equal to true, that is, if my status equal to true, I say media player dot stop. All right. It's like I'm playing a media file and in spite of having that media file being played, I try to call play again. So what I need to do, I have to first of all stop the last last playing which was getting played. So I call media player dot stop and do a status equal to false. All right. So I'm doing a status equal to false and I say if my status equal to true, all right, if my media player is equal to false, that means I'm just calling the stop on the play button again. If I click on the play button again, what I'm necessarily doing is I'm calling the pause stop again. I say status equal to true. I set this variable to true then and I call media player dot create and media player dot start. So what am I doing? Stop the last one that was getting played, set the status variable to be true so that I can play the next file. Right? That is what my button play is doing here. Right? Let me show you here this switch case here. Any person having any issues here in understanding my boolean flag here and also the media player object can respond back onto the chat window and let me also show you here where have I placed this media file. I placed under raw resources and then I go on to raw folder and here I have played a file. Sure I'll do that for you Sangami. What am I doing here is I'm attaching the on click listeners. After attaching the on click listener I check whether my status equal to true, whether I just check whether the me media file is already getting played. If it is already getting played, I'm doing a stop on the media player because I need to first of all stop the last file that was getting played. All right, just mistake here. All right, I have to stop the file that was getting played and I set the status equal to false. That is now nothing is getting played. 
and I say set this status equal to true again because now I have to start a playing again. I create the media player object and just do a start on the media player. And on the button on stop listener, what am I doing? I'm just stopping the media player. Let me show you by running this up. This is very, uh, I would say this is very easy to do, all right? Uh, because we have an API for us which does the playing for us, all right? So just go to the API, give it the file path, whichever file path you want to start playing, and it will automatically do the playing up for you, all right? And if you all want, I can also do you or say give you an example wherein you also have a progress bar with the media player. So the way you move the uh, progress bar, the way the media moves. All right. So that is a more realistic example of using the media player. I'll show you that also in the coming sessions. Let it run up and then when it runs up, I'll show you that how the media player works. So if I click on play here, it will start playing a song file for me. All right. I'll just open this up. I hope everybody can hear this up. All right. So what is being handled here is I just call the file, give it a file, call the media player object, and do a start on the media player object. Right. Now if I click on stop, this will stop the media player for me. And let me also tell you, there are also few methods that you all people can look into. One is the media player dot pause and one is the media player dot start. Let me tell you about this. If I say I call on the media player dot pause whenever a song file is being played and I call media player dot start again. So what it will do is it will pick up the file from the position it was paused at. And also a few things, if you are using media in any of your activities, just make sure that first of all, whenever you are overriding the on back press, let me do, do it for you. I'll override the on back press so that whenever you click on the on back button, inside the on back press, just make sure that you click or say stop the media. So that it does not keep playing in the background. Few things to remember. Whenever you press the hardware back button, stop the media file. Otherwise, it will keep on playing till the time the activity is removed from the, uh, or say the application is closed down by the manager. Everybody understands what I'm trying to say here. All right. And even if you are doing a finish on the activity, just before you call the finish on the activity, just do a media player dot stop. Right? So similar to a media player, we also have something which we call as video player. Right? Can we use it on destroy? That's correct, Rachid. That is the exact place where you have to use it up. On the on back press and on the on destroy. These are the two places that you have to take care of it. All right. Now, similar to the media player, we also have a video player, right? But that video player is given to us with the help of a widget. The widget's name is video view, right? Let me show you how I have worked with this example of a video player. All right. So here, what I have done, same folder. Just remember, same folder. I have to place the video file also. The three GP files have to go in here. Three GP or the MP4 files. All right. In the raw folder, same place. Go on to the video player activity. Here I'll be needing a widget. So if I go on to main here, you'll see I have placed a video view here. Can everybody check this up? A video view object. Where are you going to find this up? In the images and media. You just go and drag and drop a video view object. Just let me know if this is clear to everyone. In the images and media, drag and drop a video view object. Let's go to the video player app activity. Inside this, if you see here, first of all, take the reference of the video view. Then there comes the difference. Let me tell you about this. Whenever we work on a video view, right? 
we need to give it a file path. But since if you all know, video files are something that are quite heavy, quite large in memory size. So they are not the ones that are actually picked up by the R binding. Are you all getting my point? Because if I have to create a R file, I have to create a mapping for it, then in a way I'm wasting resources. I'll first of all map my R file, then ask it for loading the video view path, and then all the kinds of stuff. So whenever we are working with a video view, we actually refer, refer to the exact file path. Exact file path of the video file. So here you see, I'm using a URI. A URI is a uniform resource identifier, right? It is actually a path to the actual video file that is being housed by the device. So if you see, I'm doing a URI dot parse Android resource. Let me tell you about what this contains. It's like the data data folder. So this particular URI dot parse, first of all, goes into that particular Android resource folder. That's correct, Prabha. And it first then looks out for the package name, which is the package name of the application. Then it, what it does is it appends a forward slash in order to find a raw file. I hope now this complete phenomena would have got more clear to you. Why are we using the exact path here? Because a video file is quite large, so that is why we have to make use of the exact file path. Here I say, set the video URI to the path that I have just fixed up. Then I can also search, all right. What if we have video.3gp and video.mp4? You cannot have two files name, uh, file names with different formats, Praveen. All right, it will give you this uh, Android Eclipse uh, will give you a problem here if it find, finds out two file names with similar names. Because if you are seeing here, you are actually referring to a single file, not using the extensions, right? I say video view dot set video URI and if you want you can associate also the media controllers with it. Media controllers are the ones that give you the play, pause, forward, next or say forward or rewind behavior onto the video view. Whenever you click on the video view it will give you a few buttons at the bottom. I'll just show you that. Let me just run this up. will take some some time to load up because it's also caching up the video file with it. So if you see here is a video file, if I click on it, you can see the media controllers. Can everybody see this, these media controllers here? Right, so that is how if you want to have the video player included inside your applications, that is how you have to create all the video files and refer to them ref uh, separately. Like if you have to play a video one, you have you give it a video one path, similarly video two path, similarly and so on and so forth. Right, so that is how you will be using a video player inside your application.